Hey everybody, it's Mike. I'm back with another tutorial on generative AI audio with AudioCraft. In the last episode, we used AudioCraft to be able to pass in a set of parameters from the command line of a sound we want to hear and generate that file. In this episode, we are going to be providing a much better user interface for that process. We're going to set up a standard web front and back end in Python, Flask, and HTML and JavaScript and allow a user to fill out a form with that description of the sound they want to hear and then do the same thing, generate those audio files. So if you've done a lot of setting up a web back and front end, you can probably skip this video. This is an episode for all the folks who maybe are interested in generative AI, but come across these libraries and, and are just like, how do I make this more accessible to people? Or how do I integrate this into my app? So let's get into it. Okay, so this was our code where we left off and we had this audio gen demo file that you see here. And as you can see, there's nothing in this code that will generate anything that the user can see on screen. And for that, what we need is what's called a front end. And typically, in order for a user to request information such as files and things like that, it needs a backend as well to be able to handle those requests securely and not uh, compromise anything that the user might be sending from their browser to the server. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be setting up a front end and a back end. And since we're using Python and a Python library to do all of this AI audio generation, what we're going to want to do is use a Python library for that back end. So as you can see here, I mentioned we'd be setting up Flask. This is Flask's sexy website. And they have a quick start, which will tell you how to get started with Flask. And what's a Flask app look like? There's the code. So what this is doing is just importing the library. It's declaring an app. And then it's giving us a route. And the route is slash here just meaning the default route. And this is what it's going to generate. It's going to generate a web page with just a paragraph tag that says, hello world. That's your basic Flask app. So we're going to install Flask by using these instructions, which is to use pip, just the same way that we used pip to install other dependencies for AudioCraft. We can use it to install Flask. So pip install Flask in my code. And now that that's installed, I can go ahead and import Flask. The next thing we're going to want to do is all of this stuff here was necessary in order to accept a description from the command line. We're no longer doing that, so we don't want to use this code anymore. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that. And then just to test our Flask app, let's go ahead and paste in that starter code they gave us. So app equals flask and then we're just going to generate this hello world message and to run a flask app you say flask then you pass in an app parameter with the name of your script in this case audio gen demo and then you say run that's going to take a minute start up it is again loading our model so that is going to take some time but once that model is loaded, we're going to get a web address where we can access our application and see our front end. So here we go. It tells us it's running at this address. And if we command click on Windows, we will see our web page. And there we go. We've got our hello world message being displayed in HTML. That's all well and good, but we want to make this actually do something useful. So let's get into the process of incorporating AudioCraft and a form where we can accept an audio description. If you look at the Flask documentation quick start, there's a section on rendering templates. And the way that templates are rendered in Flask is to be served out of a templates folder. And in that templates folder, you put your HTML files. And then to be able to do that from the back end, you need this render template function. 
and then you need to call in your route return render template with the name of the file and then the name of the page. So we're going to do that. Here's my folder structure. I'm going to create a new folder called templates. And I'll create an index.html file. That's the default file that is usually served on a web server. And we're just going to paste in this code, which is a very basic HTML structure with a title. We'll call it audio gen demo and that same hello world message. Now on my back end, I just want to change this flask import to include that render template function. And then where we have this route, I'm going to replace that with a call to the render template function, passing in our index.html file. The last thing I'm going to do, and this is just going to be temporary, but we don't want to, while we're testing, load this model every time because uh, it's just going to make things super slow and it's going to load a four gigabyte model every time we start up our server. So I'm going to save that so that it only loads if we call the generate audio function, which we're not doing right now. So now let's run our app again. And this time you can see the server starts up way faster and we've got that hello world being printed out to the screen. Okay, so back on our back end here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to be able to accept data from the front end. We're going to need to be able to do that in a standardized format. That format is called JSON. So here in our imports from Flask, we're going to use this JSONify method that is included with Flask to be able to turn data from the front end into JSON. And we're going to use this request module, which will allow us to accept requests from the front end. Next thing we're going to do is set up a route where we can receive that data. So this is how you do that in Flask. Uh, the route's going to be called generate audio. And what the method is going to be is a post method, meaning the front end is sending data to the back end. The other frequent method that you'll see is get, where we're just retrieving data from the back end. But this time we're using post and we're going to define our route with this function generate audio route. And what that's going to do is it's going to assign to a variable named data our request as JSON. And then we're expecting that that data will contain something called descriptions. And those descriptions are going to contain the descriptions of the audio that the user wants to hear. We're going to assign that to a variable called descriptions. And then if that's gone correctly, then we're going to assign to a variable called results the result of this generate audio function. And so we're calling that function and passing our descriptions. Now, that's exactly what we were doing before from the command line. But now, instead of coming from the command line, it's coming from our web front end. And then once we have those results, we return them to the front end in this JSON format once again. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to create an array for these results in this generate audio function. And then I want to, for each sound file that gets generated, append the name of that file to the array. So that's what we're sending back here via return results to this function. So results is now going to have the results of the generate audio function, which is going to be an array of file names. And it's going to send those to the front end. So next step will be on the front end to loop through that array of file names, generate them on screen with a link to download the sound files. Now, the last thing I've done here is I've just renamed hello world to generate home route so that it follows the convention we set here with this generate audio route. Now, we're not going to know that any of this worked until we actually post some data to this generate audio route and receive something back. And that's going to require us to move over to the front end and set that up. So we no longer want this hello world. So I'm going to put a heading tag here that's called audio gen demo. And then I'm just going to test this with two 
description inputs. We could probably set this up to be able to accept as many descriptions as the user wanted to generate. But for now, we'll just have two separate input fields with a description one and a description two, and then a button to submit those descriptions. And then the last thing we want is a container where we display the results, which are going to be, again, links to the audio files that the user can click on to download and hear them. So now that that's set up, what we want to do is add an event listener for this button. So without any script telling us what to do with this button, it's not going to do anything when we click it. For that, we're going to need JavaScript. So I'm going to add these script tags in my HTML. And what I'm doing here is I'm searching the HTML document for something with the ID of generate audio button. That matches this here. ID equals generate audio button. We're going to say add event listener. What type of event? It's a click. And what do we do once they click it? We run this function. And in that function, we're going to, same way that we got the audio button, get the description one and description two value. So we don't want the element itself. We want the value that the user has put into that field. Then we're just making an array of those two descriptions, assigning it to a variable called data. And this is what we want to be able to pass to the back end. Remember, we set up that route as generate audio. So we're using JavaScript's fetch method, which is a way to fetch a response from the server. We're posting data to the server. Remember, we said you could also make this get. We don't want that, we want post. We're telling it that we're posting data in the format of JSON. And then we're using a JavaScript method called JSON stringify to turn that data from the HTML form into a format that can be understood by the backend. Same way as on the backend, we use this JSONify method. So now that we have that, we send it off and we wait for a response. That response is gonna contain some data. And with that data, we want to find that results div up here, that container. We're gonna give it some HTML in to put inside, which is gonna be a heading that says results. And then for each result that we get back, we're gonna have a paragraph tag with the file name. If there's a problem with that request, we're gonna use this catch method to log out the error of what went wrong. Oops, and I'm noticing I didn't change this back to post. And that's not how you generate JSON. We need this intermediary step where we take the response from the server and call the JSON function on that response so that we can get the data. That should do it. Now let's start up our server again, launch that browser window. And what do we want to hear? Let's hear some angry monkeys and some tribal drums. And we will open up our inspector to see if there's any errors. Click generate audio and we see a post request here to the generate audio route. There's no response yet. So once we get a response from the server, we'll see something there. And if we want, we can use our terminal window to be able to keep track of anything happening on the server side. And if your computer's anything like mine, that took forever, but it finally did generate a zeroth sample and a first sample. So let's see what those sound like. Hmm. Not like any monkey I've heard. Okay, tribal drums uh, doing much better than the angry monkeys. Any angry monkey experts out there, let me know how AudioCraft did on that one. Okay, so we're getting audio back, our code's working. And what do we see on the front end? We see our results, but we can't do anything with them yet. So let's make it so they can download those files.
In order to be able to give people access to those files, we're going to need this send from directory module for Flask. That's going to allow people to access files that we give them permission to on our server. So down in our generate audio function, first, we're going to include this code so that if there's not already a directory called audio files to make it, and then our file name is just going to be the number dot wave. And then we're going to make a file path to the directory on our server where that zero dot wave and one dot wave live, which is going to be this audio files slash file name zero dot wave. Next, instead of writing IDX as the name, we're going to write to the file path. So instead of going in the root here, it's going to now go in the audio files directory, which is a much better spot for it. And then everything else stays the same in that audio write function. The last thing we need is a route from which the front end can request that file. So that's what this looks like in Flask. You have, same way as before, a slash download audio route, but this time it's accepting a parameter. And in that parameter, what we're telling it to expect is an integer, which would be that file ID. So if it's download audio slash zero, we know we need to go grab zero dot wave from the audio files directory. So we say return, send from directory, audio files, the file zero dot wave as an attachment, true. And that's going to automatically download that file to the user's browser when they click a link. Now we need to make a link. So instead of just a paragraph tag with the file name, we now have a link to slash download audio slash index zero or one. And then we have this download attribute on the link and that lets our front end know that we want to download whatever comes back. That button is going to say download audio and our front end should be set up. Let's test this out. Run, wait. Access the server, elephant, spring water, and choking. Sorry, that's dark. Whatever. See what we get. Index is not defined. Ah, oh, dang it. Where did I forget to put index? Ah, yes. Need to add that as a parameter. And I forgot to save my file. Uh, I noticed that because these files are not in the right directory. Let's try again. Let's go with keyboard clicking and timer ticking. Yep, got another error. We do not have the OS module. We need to import that. Sorry. Try this again. Keyboard clicking. Timer ticking. Generate audio. We've got a post request. I don't see any errors yet. I don't see any here. Let's see if we get files to the audio files directory. We did. They're named wrong. It must append the WAV file automatically. So let's remove it here and let's see what these sound like. Keyboard clicking. And timer ticking. Okay. How about on the front end? Index not defined. This has to be like that. It's console.log our data dot results. Just to make sure we got them. And we'll say results. So we know where we're at. One more time with feeling. I'm running out of things to generate audio for. 
sniffling and sneezing, an irate crowd. And through the magic of television, we have our audio files. If I check my downloads folder, there they are. That's pretty, yeah, I'll buy that one. Wow, nice job, audio craft. Crowd was irate. The sniffling and sneezing were accurate. Let's make sure these ended up in the right spot on our back end. They did. So that is kind of how you would integrate this library into a scalable front end back-end traditional web application. But there is an easier way to do all of this that would save us way more time and effort. You actually see it like in hugging phase when you see a demo, people will include these interfaces and they all look the same. They use something called Gradio. And so in the next episode, we will integrate Gradio. It's gonna be a very quick episode, quick change, but it's gonna do a lot of the work of the code that we had to write here for us. And the reason that I made you all suffer through doing it this way is just so you can see that if you wrote a full app, you might want to do it this way because you just have a lot more flexibility over user interaction and where files get stored and things like that. But Gradio can do a lot. So I think you'll like it. Check us out next video. Thank <laughs> you.